from SF Land, this is Dorking Out, a podcast for people who love to dork out about movies, TV, and everything pop culture. Welcome to episode 145 of Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. And in this episode, we're dorking out about 1989's When Harry Met Sally. You Margo, know what? it had to be you. I just was going to do that. You robbed it from me. <laughs> I was going to sing it to you. <laughs> it had to be you. <laughs> I have a great voice. We are, <laughs> we are so in sync. I, I think we're menstruating at the same time too, right? Like, <laughs> so we just lost all of our listeners. <laughs> Every hack comic from the eighties is going, yes. Yeah. You're menstruating at the, the same time. Let's talk about your cramps. Oh, <laughs> I just blew all of our listeners. Sorry, everybody. So we this was originally going to be like our New Year's Eve movie, but we pushed it out a week so that we could yep. talk about Penny Marshall last week. And this week we're talking about her ex-husband's movie. <laughs> 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 this is directed by Rob Reiner and written by Nora Ephron, who I super love. Um, Margo, what's your relationship with When Harry Met Sally? It came out, it's going to be 30 years this year, which I can't believe. I know. But it it's a summer movie. I remember it came out in the summer and I remember I could not wait to see it. I think I saw it opening weekend and I just completely fell in love with it. And I saw it a couple of times in the theater. I remember when it came out in video, we had to wait a long time to rent it mm -hmm. because everybody else wanted it. I think when it came on HBO, it was a big deal. And then, yeah, I've just, I've always loved it. I always watch it when it's on TV. I always get sucked into it. Yeah. And it's one of those I just movies. think it's, it is. It's completely one of those movies. My sister's hilarious. My sister was obsessed with Meg Ryan's hats, and my sister had a collection of those kind of hats going for a while. She's got like a almost like a a different take on the Annie Hall look, right? Do you think yeah. it's related, like a tribute? I think, it, I think it is, but it's a little fussier and a little more tailored. Yeah. Whereas Diane Keaton was a little, you know, it was a little looser, the, yeah, the because, fit and everything. Because Sally's kind of structured and uptight and completely closed off but in a yes. good way but in a way that's adorable <laughs> I saw this movie in the theater too with a group of friends and uh, also with a boy I was seeing at the time and when the movie was over of course all the guys were like just totally zeroed in on the faking orgasm scene it's like yep. all they could talk about and they were like, that doesn't happen to me. And I was like, dude, you guys are like 18. It's totally <laughs> happening to you. Like, <laughs> that's fine. Like, live in your denial land. But it's 100% happening to you. They just yeah, totally you missed the point. They were like, well, I would be able to tell. I'm like, you're literally saying what Billy Crystal said in the movie. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. It's true. <laughs> Have you ever been to Katz's Deli? No. In New York, they actually have a sign, and it hangs from the ceiling to the spot where they were sitting. And the, this is when the Harry met Sally scene. This was the chair. And do, you always have to, like, struggle to get to that chair if you're really interested. Yeah. Well, I, but it's I, a great place for food. I read that the sign says, I hope you have what she's having. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that scene is so, so famous. Yes. It's I mean, it's a ridiculously hilarious scene. It's still funny. It's, you know, of course, everyone knows it's Rob Reiner's mother who delivers the I'll have what she's having. It's um, it's still just so funny. And I heard that it was Billy Crystal that came up with that line. But it's Meg Ryan who came up with the, uh, the whole idea. Yeah. Yeah. She wanted Sally to have something more fun to do. Yeah. And it's a really good scene. Yeah, it is a great scene. I... I just always have loved this movie, and I love Nora Ephron. Did you watch that documentary about her that came out like two years ago? No, I didn't. It was, it's really, really good, and I think it's on HBO still. You could totally watch it. It's She was just such a terrific journalist, and there's so much about this movie that rings true, and it's because Nora Ephron like, interviewed people and talked to people about like divorce and being single and dating and puts those stories 
in the movie. Even like the 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 vignettes of the old couples, like they're all played by actors, but the stories yes. are real. And I think that that's one of the reasons this movie holds up is because there's so much truth in this movie. And I just, it's one of the things I love about it. And it's one of the things that really worked for me in the rewatch is how true some of these things are. Also what works, I think for me is just how beautiful New York looks. I was going to ask you, how do you think this looks for New York? Like, does it capture New York? It, it definitely captures a part of New York. You know, you're not down by Wall Street. You're not in Brooklyn. You're not in, you know, the outer boroughs. It's very much like, you know, Upper West Side, you know, Zabars, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But it captures it beautifully. And, you know, I, I look around, I'm like, pan around the buildings. I want to see what everything looks like because <laughs> everything changes, you know, since then. All the all the changes of New York that ha- happened to the skyline since then, I would love to see it. Yeah. But it's it's still, yeah, it just totally does capture what's I, – it made me want to move to New York. And it was 89, right around yeah. then? Yep. I've never been to New York. Oh, you sh- – what? We have to fix that. I know. I know. It's kind of stupid that I've never been to New York. <laughs> At this point, it's stupid. <laughs> it is, is stupid. It's like, it's embarrassing. It's like, some, sometimes I just pretend, yeah, I've totally been there. Because like, it's like <laughs> almost shameful that I haven't been there. It's stupid. David's afraid that my, that's my husband would be, he's afraid I would go to New York and I would never come back. <laughs> You're a San Francisco girl through and I, through. I totally am. Yeah. I can't help myself. Did you have a favorite of the vignettes of the old couples telling their stories? Um, I thought they were all, gosh, which one, is, what is, what is your favorite? I love the ones with the camp counselors. And, you know, she says that he was coming across the dance floor to, she assumed to talk to her friend because guys were always crossing dance floors to talk to her friend, but he was coming to talk to her. And then she said, and just like that, I knew I knew like, you know, about a good melon. (laughs) Yes, 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 yes. It just makes me laugh. It's like, you're a good melon. (laughs) I liked the one where it was the couple where they got divorced. Yes. And then they separated for a while. And then he got married a couple of times and she got married a couple of times. It was like 30 years later, I think, but they finally got back together again. And they, yeah, they look so happy. I mean, I, I know. I, I love those vignettes. I think they're the best part of the movie. I think they're really good. And I think that they, I don't know, they just take the movie so it's not just like a standard rom-com. Although, at the time when Harry Met Sally really wasn't a standard rom-com, like it's kind of what all the rom-coms would become. Yeah, it it's, changed the rom-com. Yeah, it was like, what, before that you kind of had like the like the Woody Allen Annie Hall, super neurotic Mm -hmm. rom-coms. And then, like, this is almost like a more, like, um, accessible (laughs) version of that. Yeah. And then it kind of turns into, like, Sleepless in Seattle and You've Got Mail and, you know, things like that. Like, really beautiful-looking, cozy, romantic comedies. With with people you really can relate to. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, it's, 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 and it's also, I, it's so funny. This movie, like right off the bat, I forgot all these scenes. Like I forgot the scene. So they meet in the graduating college and Billy Crystal is like spitting the seeds out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, wrote, I forgot all about that. I was dying. I wrote that down because I love that they establish exactly who these people are within like five minutes so immediately he's like do you want some grapes and she says I don't like to eat between meals and I'm like okay well that is so that just sums her up right and then he spits the grape seeds and hits the window and he's I'll roll the window down it's like it just sums it up and then the whole conversation about his dark side is like so college you know, I'm so deep because I'm so dark. And she says, like, it doesn't make you deep or anything, you know. And I just, I know I've had those conversations in my 20s with guys that are like, I read the last page of the book, so I know how it ends. <laughs> in case I die, I'm so deep. And it's like, ugh, you're not deep. You're just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he, Harry is a total asshole mm-hmm. at first. I mean, he's funny, but yeah. he's, he's a total asshole. He's very condescending. 
yeah. and very dismissive of her. And, and you've never you've really had great sex before. Yeah. And you've never, I mean, all that stuff that crap, what's crap guys do. Yeah. I'm just you know, like, some guy, type you, of guy Harry. does. You don't yeah. know her. Now he's a lot older than her, right? I mean, Billy yeah. Crystal. Yeah. He must be right. Cause she, I mean, he's, she, this was like one of her first big movies, right? She did like Top Gun. Yes. And then what maybe Inner Space? Before? I love Inner Space. I haven't seen it in so long, but I remember really really loving it. And, and yeah. You know, Meg Ryan, sorry, everybody drink. She's adorable. And she's She is so adorable, adorable in this movie. Yeah, so Billy Crystal was 41. Yeah. And she was 28. <laughs> That's so Hollywood. <laughs> That's so Hollywood. But you know, here's the thing. I know that going in and I still root for them. Like, I don't care. I, I, I just sort of like, all right, that's the, what the movie is doing. That's yeah. what it, how it's moving along. I, I love it. And I love the whole construct. Like you see them five years later and then six years after that yeah, you see, and, so you and see how they've them grown 70, and changed. Yeah. 77, 82. And then I guess 87. And it makes sense that because they grow as people throughout those years so you can see why the relationship would change and how they get to like a spot where they can actually be friends and I really like that about her and I about both of them actually they're yeah it, and they yeah they kind of grow together and they have such good chemistry the they, actors they have do. great chemistry and because I just I know that like Billy Crystal was like a big deal especially like when Harry met Sally and then you know, city slickers and forget Paris and stuff like that. But I just don't think Billy Crystal's like an attractive man. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't buy him as like a romantic lead necessarily, but he really works in this movie because he is like an every man, I guess. That's what works for me in this movie. Well, that he's, he's, is very funny and very charming. Yeah. Like it, it would be, it would be fun to be hanging out with him. He's very quick witted. He's willing to be silly Right. So I could totally see. I, I love that when they first started hanging out and they go to the museum. Yeah. And he's like, I think we're going to talk like this the rest of the day. <laughs> Papa Cash. My sister and I still do that sometimes when we talk about like pepper or whatever. Like, I'm going to buy some pepper. I'm going to buy some pepper for my Papa Cash. <laughs> we have so my sister and I still have lines from this movie that we say all the time so there's like the the pepper and the popper kosh there's baby fish mouth which we just <laughs> scream all the time for no reason at all baby fish mouth <laughs> <laughs> I just, there's so many so many awesome like he's never going to leave her <laughs> <laughs> nobody thinks he's gonna leave her marie you're right you're right. You're right. Okay. R.I.P. Carrie Fisher. Oh, and Bruno Kirby. And Bruno Kirby. So Bruno Kirby died in 2006 from uh, leukemia. Oh. I know. And then she died in 2016, so 10 years later. I And I love them. Too. That is such a great twist in the movie. I remember the first time I saw that. When it turns out they're the ones that hit it off and they just jump into the car together, like, take it slow. Yeah, yeah, we're going to take it slow. I, I taxi. Wasn't even, yeah, I wasn't even <laughs> thinking about tonight. Well, I'm tired of walking. I'm going to get a taxi. I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so adorable. It makes the, the whole awkward double date makes me laugh really hard every yeah. time. Like, just the whole, like, I'm not a fan of Jimmy Brislin. Well, he's the reason I became a writer, but that's not important. <laughs> we've all been on a date like that too where you're being set up and you have nothing to talk about like the things that they're precious about you don't care and vice versa yes and they Bruno Kirby and Carrie Fisher are so awesome together and Mm -hmm. they're they're like the perfect like best friends for the and and they're such a cute couple and I love their stuff together too like when they're arguing about that ugly wagon wheel (laughs) too Here's my problem. I don't think it's so bad. I mean, <laughs> which I'm one of the assholes that's like, oh, what's so wrong? I don't think it's all that terrible. I don't know. I just I like shabby it. chic stuff. I love it that at the end of that scene where Billy Crystal like goes, you know, this ugly Roy Rogers wagon wheel coffee table, you know, and he storms off. And then Carrie Fisher says, and it's like so sweet. She says, I want you to know I will never want that wagon wheel coffee table. <laughs> 
And that's when Harry and Sally have a big argument. Yeah. And they're outside, and this is the first time like they have an argument, and then they settle it. Yeah. And he, you know, she tell they get, they give each other side, and then he does the right thing. He apologizes. Yeah. Which is what an adult should do. Yes. That's how you apologize. That's how you end an argument. And they hug, and then they go back in, and he throws out the wagon wheel table. <laughs> Not a word. <laughs> Not a word. <laughs> she. Sally really dishes it out in that fight, too. She's like, you're going to have to move back to New Jersey because you slept <laughs> with everyone in New York. I'm like, but oh, you're also... burnt, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> that rings so true, though. Like, a guy that all of a sudden, like, gets divorced is going to sleep with every woman he can. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't fix anything. No. What do you think of Meg Ryan's wardrobe in this movie? I think it's so good. Yeah. I I want to wear everything and it doesn't look dated even with the shoulder pads. Right. She still looks, I mean, it looks really nice. I mean, it's like a, they didn't go full eighties. And I think that was the smart thing to yeah. do it, because of that. And because of the music, I think the movie doesn't date as right. Um, her, I mean her hair a little bit, but overall, like, because the wardrobe is pretty, um, I don't want to say plain. That's not the, not no, outlandish classic. classic that's thank yeah. you that's a good way to put it i think it dates really well this movie yeah i agree she it's just it's just a nice classic style that fits her perfectly i and, and much like your sister i love the hats oh the hats are just beautiful. i'm a hat person I yeah like it. yeah my sister collected those hats like specifically she would go to stores i want a when harry met sally hat <laughs> and I'm like, okay that's really cute <laughs> yeah do you have a favorite part of the movie? I like it when the couples are, are interacting with each other. Um, I love the split screen, like after they have sex yes. and they both call in and they both have their own phone line in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, I, I just figured out this time. I'm like, I'm oh, like, that dates line. the movie. That dates the movie a little bit. Landlines. <laughs> yeah. The little landline, but still like it's a best use of, of split screen it ever. Is it really works perfectly and it's it's and it's just written so well and i i just i love it and i like it when she kind of dumps him and yeah. and when he tries to like win her back she's like i'm not your consolation prize oh that like, scene like oh it i feel for her yeah i I, I mean i feel like i've been there like the dude that I don't know shit didn't work out and then they get lonely mm -hmm. and they try to get back together with you and you're like no i know what you're doing Right. I'm like, I'm right. not, I'm not doing that with you. Uh, no, she's setting boundaries. Yeah. I have so many favorite scenes. Yeah. I, I do love, I love the whole awkward date. I think that might be one of my favorite scenes. And I just love the whole montage of them, like becoming friends, like where yes. she's trying to put the envelopes in the oh, she mailbox and he's like just losing his mind or like they're walking in the park. And of course, it's beautiful. And like the leaves on the trees, it's all like perfect fall day. And she's telling her like sex fantasy she's had since she's 12 and how she only buries <laughs> the clothes. <laughs> You know, just like all of those little things. Like, I just love that stuff because I think, I don't know, it sums up like the kind of situation that everybody wants. Like, everybody wants someone to love them no matter how weird they are. Yeah. You know, and like that whole speech he gives at the end. Like, I love oh. that, you know, uh, it takes you a half hour to order a sandwich and like you get the little crinkle above your nose and I could smell your perfume. You know, those things. Like, everybody wants that, I think. Or I Absolutely. think most people want that so i i just love that part i love the music in here is this the first time a harry connick jr is on the scene i think so i think this is his first soundtrack i mean it, it just works beautifully at uh, just all the all the i just loved it when i'm trying to think of like what was um i love i like the very last vignette is harry and sally yeah. And they're talking about the cake and the layered cake, and you have to have the <laughs> coconut on the side. They're so cute together. <laughs> coconut, because not everybody likes it right on the cake. No. It makes no, it very you know. mushy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this. this I'm, I, I'm remembering now. No, the, the football scene, the stadium. Oh, yeah. Where they're doing the wave. He's oh, talking about God. getting dumped. It's such a punch. You'll, you won't recover from that soon. I know dialogue. <laughs> I just I love Bruno Kirby. Like every scene with Bruno Kirby and Carrie Fisher. I love Bruno it. Kirby. You made a woman meow? Oh yeah. I love <laughs> you made a woman meow. I look at 
her the batting cage. Yeah. It's like I'm, I'm, Harry's like, I feel like I'm growing up with her. She's like, I'm making me grow. Then a little kid comes over like, hey, mister. He's like, I got a stack of quarters. I was here first. I'm going to be here all he goes, day. Where was I? You were growing. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to reenact the script for you guys. <laughs> and I love, you know, and of course I love baby fish mouth. It's uh, one of my baby fish. Yeah. We say that in my family a lot yeah. when you can't think of what to say. Yeah, It's one of my, it's just one of my favorite things ever. And it's also, uh, oh, Ryan, uh, Penny Marshall's daughter is Emily. In oh, this really? Movie. And, yeah. And she was Betty Spaghetti. Yeah. God, I didn't put that together. Yeah, she was Betty Spaghetti in the that last one we covered, A League of Their Own, and then this one. And she was also, by the way, I saw A League of Their Own, the TV series on YouTube. I, oh, I started watching. How was it? Not good. Okay, well, that's <laughs> maybe why it lasted like six episodes. <laughs> yeah, no, surprisingly. But she's she's Emily. Oh, and I was writing down, like, there's quite a few people. The girl that plays Amanda, his first girlfriend from college, mm -hmm. Michelle DeCastro, she died. Aww. In 2010, cancer. Fuck cancer. Fucking cancer. Fucking cancer. Oh, I love um, her, oh, when he sees Helen, Harley Jane Kozak <laughs> yes. with Ira. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking oh. Ira. Fucking Ira. You find yourself singing you know, Surrey with the fridge on top in front of Ira. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love, I love it when they sing together and like, she's so bad. Oh, but it's so cute. They're so yeah. cute. They're so cute together. They are so cute together. They have such a good time. And when Bruno Kirby says to him at the batting cages, like, you get along with her, you find her attractive. And he's like, yes, yes. And he's like, you're afraid to let yourself be happy. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's probably it. He's afraid to let himself be happy. Well, you know, he was happy with Helen for a while. Yeah. And then, and then he got dumped. So he's he's a little gun shy, which makes sense. Yeah. I'm fascinated that all these women in New York wanted to sleep with Billy Crystal. You, I, you know what, though? I'm always surprised at the guys that get lucky that <laughs> like that. I mean, they, they're good talkers. <laughs> talk you into anything. They could talk it. I, you know that. They'll yeah. make you meow, apparently. <laughs> yeah, he probably has some moves. You I know? guess so. You know, he must be a great kisser, you know, and then gets can, can seal the deal. That must be it. Yeah. Do you think men and women can be friends? Okay, that's the one part I didn't like. Yeah. And that's very dated. It's very heteronormative, let's be clear. Yeah. Also. But, I mean, and there's nobody of, there's very few people of color. Yes. But also, I remember when they were promoting this movie, they were all on Oprah. Mm -hmm. and oprah even asked billy crystal like are you sure what do you mean about this whole thing and he just shook his head no there's nope men and women can't be friends nope 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 and it's always like oh come on yeah that's ridiculous like, it's ridiculous and it's just like what what purpose does do women serve if right. they're not your wife or your girlfriend or something yeah. like come on yeah it's kind of bullshit it's total bullshit that's his age kind of yeah. showing right there well, he's a different like, generation you know so then people will point to this movie and say we'll see they can't because they end up together and I'm like well that's not really what the story they're not supposed to be no. representative of all men and women this is just their story that's why it's called when Harry met Sally it's about them not all so, men and women so I have a question for you yeah do you have any friends or couple friends who say we're just like when Harry met Sally do you yes I have a couple and they're the most annoying people <laughs> <laughs> so they think they're so cute. <laughs> I actually told my sister we were going to be talking about this, and her and her boyfriend have been friends for years, and my sister was married, and, like, he was married, and then they were both single at the same time, and now they're together. And she's like, Oh, that's so funny. And she's like, We're kind of when Harry met Sally. Oh, and I was no. like, I was like, I guess. And I was like, I guess David and I are Bruno Kirby and Carrie Fisher, because we were totally, <laughs> like, running away and, like, getting in the cab. Like, like on a first date, like we're like, that's it. We're together. Bye. I think I would prefer that. Yeah. And I would totally live with his ugly wagon wheel table. I don't care. I don't care. I know that that's the one thing I, that's, it's weird what we focus on. Like yeah. when you watch something like a hundred times, but I was always like, yeah, I'm the last person to be bothered by the wagon wheel, but I get it. But yeah. um, Carrie Fisher, I love that she had the Rolodex at the table. <laughs> That made me laugh too. And like she's like, that guy's married, and she's like, oh, she oh. folds the card. Yeah, and then she like bookmarks it, like folds it. A little. Oh, married. 
like oh when lisa lisa jane persky her friend yeah. when she's like well at least you could say you were married like <laughs> wait what that's also one of those things that's kind of dated it's like what you know yeah where it's like well what are you if you're not marrying somebody well, it's like me i i go through life like you're not a wife or somebody's mother like what purpose do you serve <laughs> yeah margo what purpose do you serve <laughs> I, well yeah you get that it's sometimes so, i mean uh, thankfully it's going away it's yeah. going away but yeah i i can't imagine like this age like 30 years ago how i would be treated yeah it's ridiculous yeah i'm like first of all it's none of your business yeah Second, i'm fine <laughs> yeah i'm awesome yeah duh duh of course you're <laughs> awesome Okay, so I love also the scene, it, the first time they meet up again in the airport where she's making out, like, this is also another time, like, you can make out with your, your boyfriend would take you to the airport, but also, like, <laughs> inside by the gate. I love, that's so, that's so 80s that he would take her to the airport. <laughs> well, they would take her to the gate, like, they actually, yeah. like, took her, like, right that's inside. That's true. Like, that's all that security and shit, you would never, you can't even do that now. You know, if you're lucky, you drop that's, them off out front. You're right, that's actually the most dated thing in the movie. I think so. And then I love it. Like, and uh, Billy Crystal, when he's just like talking to her and she, Meg Ryan is so fucking funny. Yeah. There's, is there some point where she just kind of like her, she hangs her head and tilts it to the side when they're at the little, little walking thing mm -hmm. in the airport. And she's just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like yeah. she just, she has great expressions. She, she is so fucking good in this movie. Yes! And I, I put in my notes, I was like, it's like a performance for the ages. Like yeah. Every like every romantic comedy there's a Meg Ryan type character. She's stupid good in this movie. She should have won all the awards. This is like a a performance that stands the test of time. And so of course I went back and I was like, "Well, who was nominated for stuff?" And that's the year Jessica Tandy won for Driving Miss Daisy, and I think we oh. all still watch that movie all the time oh yeah that doesn't date it at all look the so the other ones were like isabel a johnny for like camille claudel i don't even know what that is i don't even uh, know what that pauline is pauline collins for shirley valentine oh i remember that movie uh did jessica lang i didn't see that one no i did see that one it played at my theater the middle-aged lady who goes yeah. to greece yes. and yeah it's actually very cute and then jessica lang for music box I don't even remember that movie. That's some thriller, right? And then the only other one where I was like, well, that's a good one is Michelle Pfeiffer for the fabulous Baker Boys. Yeah, yeah. But, but still, like, it's not a movie that anyone's talking about. And I was like, but everybody still talks about When Harry Met Sally. Well, you, did you ever see Joe vs. Volcano? Yes. Only when it first I'm... came out, though. And I've been thinking about revisiting. You should revisit it. Meg Ryan plays three different characters mm -hmm. and three different wigs, three different accents, and she is fucking hilarious in every single one. Like I, I think she's really underrated. I think so too. I think so too. I, I really like Meg Ryan. I liked French Kiss. Do you remember French Kiss? I love French Kiss. Are you kidding me? I, I thought she was so cute in that movie, and I really liked Kevin Klein in that movie, and I just like everyone. I like Meg Ryan. I find her winning. I find her adorable drink. Yeah, everybody I think drink. Everybody drink. I think I wish she would work more. I wish yeah. she would do more. Well, so last time I saw her was like, you know, in some tabloid or something. I think she was dating like John Cougar Mellencamp. Oh, they're engaged now. Okay, there you go. And then she looked like maybe she had had some plastic surgery. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, uh, Meg, what'd you do to your beautiful face? I think she's she's eased up on that. I think I, I think she's she's letting it go back to more of a natural I hope state. So. I mean, I, hope so. I get it. Like, there's unbelievable pressure on yeah. these women to look young and look beautiful and look perfect all the time and and forever and forever exactly. Like, like Nicole Kidman, I just saw a picture of her the other day. I'm like, is she still like a size zero with like no wrinkles, nothing? Yeah. I mean, Jesus, how do you, how are you supposed to get older in this culture? You like can. there's so much pressure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ima imagine that's what your work is. Your work is yeah. that you have to look young and beautiful and perfect all the time. That sounds terrible. Like decades <laughs> for decades. I, I bet that is so annoying. I bet that is just, I, I feel bad. I mean, 
I think you know, I was just thinking she should be in like a Netflix series yeah, or an Amazon series, like something dark and gritty. Yeah. Well, and there's, a, I think there's a reason why we're seeing like, you know, Sandra Bullock just did something on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And I remember um, Hallie Hunter had done something mm-hmm. on like TNT or something. It was like Saving Grace or something. And then Kira yes. Sedgwick was on TNT. Like, they, all these women, like Glenn Close was doing like an FX show, like all these like super awesome, cool actresses who are just a little bit older, like can't get those those romantic roles anymore because women stop falling in love by the time they're 35, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, by the time they're 40, they're playing grandmothers and then it's just this big amorphous thing. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. So one of the things Sexism. I love about Meg Ryan's performance in this movie I love when Sally is like uncomfortable or mad or feeling emotional but then she realizes she has to deal with shit and you can see her like put up the wall do you know what I mean like she like her like she gets like a stern face like like when Harry like walks in at the end and she sees him like she's she's all soft and she's like oh yeah and then, like, oh, now I have to deal with some shit. And she, like, kind of turns her face up and sticks her chin out. Like, she's putting up the wall. She's putting, literally putting on the brave face. Yeah. I just think it's so, I don't know, awesome and such a good performance and something that we all do. But you could see it so clearly. Um, I, she's just so great. She's awesome. This is her movie. It is her movie. I think everyone thought it was Billy Crystal's movie, but I think it's Meg Ryan's movie. No, it's all Meg Ryan and it's all um, Carrie Fisher for me. Yes. I love Marie. Marie is a great character. She is. This movie, this is another one kind of like what we talked about a leak of their own last week where they could have taken the supporting characters here and they could have also been their own movie. I think Marie and Jess. Yeah, they could have been their own movie too. I remember when uh, Bruno Kirby died. My friend Aaron sent me an email, and in the subject line, it said, Baby Fishmount Amort. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, oh. A, I just, Bruno Kirby, you know, he could go on our list of like the un- unappreciated, underappreciated yeah. actors. Like, he's one of those actors that when he shows up, you're like, oh, sweet. Bruno Kirby's in this. Like, another one that you're, you're just, you're going to get something good. Yeah, and he, I totally he was agree. Always super good. And I also want to say a oh, shout out to the running time for this movie. It is one hour and thirty five minutes. <laughs> Yay! Like I love it when a movie's under two hours. <laughs> it, it, there's not a wasted scene in here. Like, no, everything. Yeah, everything matters. Everything matters, and I just that I don't know why everyone thinks every movie needs to be over two hours. I'm like then it's just too long and it's padded out and there's just shit in there you don't need. And I think this leaves you wanting more. It's hour 35. Boom. Perfect. And they end it with them talking about the coconut cake. Yeah. And then it goes, then it goes boom right into it had to be and they do the credits. And it's so like, I could sit there for another half an hour. I'm just like having such a good time. It is just a perfect romantic comedy. And it holds up. Yeah. I, it definitely holds up. I love I, it. I was, I loved it too. I just, I was complete. I was smiling the whole time. I, I squealed when they kiss at the end. Aww. I, I, I get all gooey and excited. So I, I, I saw that this movie has 90% on Rotten Tomatoes and I keep thinking, who are the 10% that don't like this movie? <laughs> There's always some grump. I was watching I'm uh, like, last what night. What a bunch of miserable assholes. Oh, oh Absolutely. <laughs> No, I was watching uh, last night for Book versus Movie. I watched The Wizard of Oz, mm-hmm. and I looked it up, and there's one person in 1939 <laughs> who gave it a terrible review. Like it's, it, they thought it was stupid and not imaginative. Not imaginative. I'm sorry, not imaginative. <laughs> right, he died in World War II, so we don't have to worry. <laughs> there, I don't even. I don't even. Karma underst- took over. <laughs> I don't even understand that criticism. It's, yeah, it's there, the funniest thing to read ever. There were a ton of movies just like The Wizard of Oz that came out right before it. <laughs> There's nothing original about it at all. No, it was like an Armageddon deep impact situation. <laughs> like, and, and this one was the deep impact. <laughs> 
was the other one? Dante's Peak and Volcano. This one oh is the God. Dante's Peak. <laughs> Do you remember there was two Truman Capote movies that came out at the yes. same time? It's so weird. It was like it's so weird when that happens. Oh god, I love it. The, I always go back to the asteroid one. That's like my favorite. <laughs> oh, uh, there was something else I was going to say about this. Oh, did you read that? Um, in the original screenplay, they weren't going to get together. Yeah. So, uh, and then I think Rob Reiner fell in love like during the filming. Yeah. He met his wife, and that's when he wanted to change it. I think. That's the better ending. Oh, absolutely. I'd be furious if they didn't wind up together. I think there would be a riot. I think there would be riots in the streets in 1989 (laughs) if this couple did not wind up together. What do we want? (laughs) We we want Harry and Sally together. When do we want it? Now! Now! (laughs) And we're going to get the hats when we're done. We're going to get cute hats. (laughs) (laughs) And then we're going to go to Katz's Deli and get sandwiches. I'm going to have what she's having! (laughs) I just don't know if I'm like, would we still be talking about this movie if they didn't get together at the end? Even if that's the more realistic ending, I don't know if people would still be talking about it. It wouldn't be such a feel good movie. It would be like a no. bummer, right? That'd be a total bummer. That's like the way we were or something. We don't yeah. want that ending. Yeah, fuck that ending. <laughs> Spoiler for the people out there have never oh seen the way God, we were. Oh my God, you just ruined the way we were for everybody. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, Margo, what's your problem? <laughs> Leave well, some mystery we'll scratch for that one off the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to add, do we have parenthood on our list? Uh, I think we do, and it should be. It, it should is... be, because Harley Jane Kozak's in that. Yeah, it's also one of my favorites. She's great. I mean, she only shows up for one scene, and you're supposed to kind of hate her yeah. because she broke Harry's heart. And then she walks into the room like, oh, she, he's he is way out of her. You know, she is no, he is way out of her league. Right. Like she is like next level, like gorgeous. Yeah. And whatever. Well, yeah. and you almost can't falter. It's like sometimes shit don't work out. Of course it doesn't. Yeah. And you get Sally. So shut up. Stop whining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you read about some of the other people that they were thinking about for Sally? There was quite a few. Um. I'm blanking now. You so, tell me. So, uh, one of them was Susan Day. Apparently, oh, that's right. Apparently, Rob oh, from Reiner, LA Law. <laughs> yeah, really wanted Susan Day, and I'm like, uh, she doesn't seem very warm. She has to... no sense of humor. Right. That's kind of I what don't I think thought too. Funny. And no. then there was Elizabeth Perkins, and I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. that makes sense. That Elizabeth work. McGovern. Yep. I'm like, eh. yeah. And then the one I was like, what was Molly Ringwald? She's been, she was also up for something in a league of their own yeah. too. And I like Molly Ringwald, but no, I'm like, I felt like she's too young. She's way too young. Yeah. She'd be, she'd be like 20, what? Like yeah. 20, 21 at the time. I'm like, you can't, um, well then you can't cast Billy Crystal. Cause then it's really no, then gross. you have to cast much younger. Yeah. And apparently for Billy Crystal at one point, there was talk of Albert Brooks, which I think yeah. is, just you're swapping out an orange for an orange at that point. <laughs> like, it's well, it's like, a much older orange, I yeah. think. But I love, I do love Albert Brooks, and I could totally I... see Albert Brooks in this movie. Well, we're but... going to talk about broadcast news one of these days, right? Yes, we are. It's actually yeah. So I made a list of some of my favorite romantic comedies. I think this is one of the best romantic comedies of all time. I think everybody thinks that. Yeah. And then I made a list of other ones, and broadcast news was on there because. I, I, I'm like, I think it falls under romantic comedy, doesn't it? It's a romantic triangle. I guess so. I, lo- I love broadcast news, and we should definitely talk about it. I know that movie, like, inside and out. I've seen it, like, a hundred times. Oh, that would be so fun to talk about. Yeah, totally. Do you, do you have other favorite romantic comedies? My favorite of all time is The Goodbye Girl. Oh, yeah. Neil Simon, it's an old one from the 70s, mm-hmm. but and then uh, I like the stuff in the 40s, you know, yeah. like uh, uh, Catherine Hepburn, the yeah. Spencer Tracy. I like I like old school kind yeah. of stuff. His I can't Girl remember. Friday. Yeah. Oh, I just saw Crazy Rich Asians. <sighs> I saw that recently too. Oh my god, it's adorable. It's so good. It's so cute, and you totally root for them. Yeah. It is one of yeah. those romantic comedies where I was like, hmm, a lot of this could have been solved with a conversation, but that's okay. <laughs> that's the most, locations. That's, that's most romantic comedies. You got to let oh, that absolutely. slide. Yeah. 
but it's really really charming it's it's so good I really enjoyed that one I was kind of surprised I didn't see it in the theater but that's that's a good modern day one yeah that's like the most recent one that I've seen that I thought was really cute like you really root for them and it's 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 also just also culturally speaking, you yeah. know, just going to, going to these different cities and just how uh, I just I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I love yeah. to talk about it sometime. Yeah. Let's put it on the list. I'll put it on the list. Absolutely. I also wrote down Bridget Jones Diary and yes. Clueless. Clueless and is adorable. The Apartment. Yes, of I course. Love, we should put that on the Eve. list, too. That's another yeah. New Year's Eve one. I love The Apartment. I love... I love Shirley MacLaine's hair in that movie as someone who has a pixie cut right now. I'm like, oh, yeah, I could just grow it out just a little bit and I could have that hair. You know what I also really love and people make fun of me, but I love grumpy old men. <laughs> <laughs> I love those movies so I, much. I don't remember much about the second one, but it's the fir- okay. But the first one played at my theater and I remember liking it because I, I love Walter Matthau and I love Jack Lemmon. Jack Lemmon is amazing, and, and he... I love them. Go ahead. Yeah. I lo- the I, original Odd Couple is one of my all-time favorite movies. It makes me laugh really, really hard every time. He, he's also great in um, the, the China Syndrome. Oh, I've never seen that one. What? I've never seen it. It's a good movie. Should I put it on my list? Put it on the list. Okay. So I wrote down some other 89 movies for us. Please. Okay. So this is a good list. Batman. Yep. Do the right thing. Yep. The Abyss. That should be on our list. That should be on our list. I love The Abyss. Do you not love The Abyss? It's okay. I haven't seen it in a while. I Mm. think I should check it out again. I like James Cameron James Cameron movies. I love Jane Cameron too. No, I don't know who that is. (laughs) (laughs) There's Jane Champion. Do you like the piano? (laughs) That's right. Uh, This is one of your favorite, Uncle Buck. I love Uncle Buck. It's so stupid, but I love it. I love it too. Dead Poets Society. I love it. Say Anything. Love Bill, it. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. That's a good year for movies. Yeah. Turner and Hooch. I make me cry my goddamn eyes out. Oh, I can't even watch Spoiler. a movie with dogs. It, they all make me cry. Yeah. And then Steel Magnolias. Oh my god, we should do that one yeah. actually. Yeah. We definitely I've seen that should. Drink times. your juice. Drink your juice, Shelby. <laughs> give Shelby the juice. Someone give Shelby the juice. <laughs> yes, the woman with the kidney problems. Get her pregnant. That'll be a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> It'll save your marriage. It's, a, it's and She does it to save her marriage. Uh, even though she's going to kill her. What are you doing, Shelby? Uh, that was a TV series. Steel Magnolias was a TV yes. series? And Cindy Williams played the mother. It was like, it, I think it was just a pilot and they just kind of threw it. Yeah. I saw it. I remember seeing it. I bet, I bet it's on YouTube. I Was it terrible? Oh, it was awful. Yeah, it sounds terrible. I don't want to see that. I don't want to watch that shit every week. No. Does she die every week? No. She, well, <laughs> no, they do this like a year after she died. <laughs> and so it's about the, 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 the widow, the widower, excuse me, yeah. dating. And then. Yeah, yeah, because that's cares. that's the character I love the most the from the movie. That's who everybody cared about yeah. from that movie, exactly. Oh There's what no ha- Dolly Parton. <laughs> what happened to Dolmet Morooney or whatever the <laughs> fuck his name was? <laughs> Dermot. Dermot, whatever. whatever. Whatever happened to What's-His-Face? <laughs> who was such an asshole. That was my favorite character in that movie. <laughs> Ugh. We need to, we have to, we have to do that movie. Yeah, we do. Let's. That maybe we need to bump that one up the list. I I think so. Did we say everything we want to say about when Harry met Sally? I can't think of anything else. I think it's like honest to God, I think it's a perfect little movie. I think there's so too. N- there's nothing I would take out of it. I mean, I, I it's a product of its time, and I th- there's no scene I would throw away. And every performance is great, and it's one of the ones that made me want to move to New York when I graduated college. So. It's That's got a good. special place in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a really it's just a perfect romantic comedy. Mm-hmm. So if for some reason you're listening to this and you haven't seen When Harry Met Sally, what the fuck is wrong with you? Go <laughs> see When Harry Met Sally right now. It's on Amazon Prime. You have no excuse. That's and right. It's, and it's coming out on Blu ray like mm-hmm. this week. So go get it. Uh what else are you dorking out about, Margot? 
So I saw Crazy Rich Asians, yes. and I've been dorking about that. And then I got this thing in my head. I wanted to watch Laverne and Shirley because oh. of because of Penny Marshall, yeah. and I loved it when I was a kid. It's not streaming anywhere. Like Ooh, they had a few what episodes. The hell? I don't know. And I had a few episodes on Logo TV on Christmas Day that I recorded. But so I went back to Amazon and said, we don't have that. But would you be interested in Family Ties? And I went down the Family Ties <laughs> rabbit hole for oh hours God. last Thursday. Which and, are you watching like from the beginning? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and I so it's like there's an episode where, the, where there's one where uh, Alex is taking speed in order to like <laughs> pass his test. This is years before Saved by the Bell, yes. by the way. And then there's one called um, Give Me a Hug, Uncle Albert. Oh, I know what, exactly what one you're talking about. And it's a guy at the station where Steven works, and he totally molests Mallory. And, like, they let him go scot-free. Like, they don't even – no one calls the cops. Alex gaslights her yeah. when, he, when he, he, um, he hugs Mallory, and then he pats her on the butt. And then she tells Alex, and he goes, "Oh, you're just imagining things. He's just affectionate. Yeah. Like they, oh, it's so crazy." Yeah. And then, they, and then they had um, Tom Hanks as yes. Uncle Ned, and he's so an the, alcoholic, right? He's an alcoholic. He yes. drinks the vanilla extract from the bottle. Mm -hmm. And then I had to tell you about this because I was completely dorking out of this. There's an episode in 1987. Alex, by the way, going to Leland College. <laughs> he never moved out. <laughs> like he, <laughs> but he's no. Why he's would at, he? Why would he exactly? Why would he be like a normal college kid? But he's um, his. This is episode's called "A." My name is Alex, and it's when his friend Greg dies, and then Alex at first is like chirpy, and like his friend dies in a car accident, and he was Alex was supposed to be with him, but he blew it off. Mm -hmm. And then at first he's kind of like making jokes, like "Yeah, my selfishness worked for me," blah blah blah. And then he starts seeing his friend everywhere, and then he has a nervous breakdown oh halfway gosh. through the episode. And then all of a sudden it's like commercial free and then it turns into our town oh. and it's like this blank set. And then Michael J. Fox is acting and he's like, there's like a, he's at a psychiatrist's office. I don't remember this episode at all. And that it's, sounds crazy. It's batshit crazy. And they do the thing where they light the set. So like over there, there's a scene with Meredith Baxter Bernie over there. There's a scene with Justine Bateman. And then in the end, he decides he believes in God, and then he's totally okay. And then it's like it's like that's not how therapy works. Like what? what? It's I don't I, I, I I'm don't cured. remember it. I'm cured. <laughs> it's batch it. That's what I've been dorking out about. And so I've been looking it up on the internet. And a lot of people go back and like this is crazy. That this is, is like crazy. A, yeah. So that's what I've been dorking out he, about. Um, that show started before like back to the future. So like originally it was supposed to be like, Hey, it's these hippie parents and they've got yep. these, like, you know, Alex is like super Republican or whatever. And then the daughter who's not basically like hippies trying to raise their kids. And then it just totally turned into like the Alex P Keaton show because they knew they had somebody good there in Michael J. Fox. But I totally don't remember that episode. And I watch that show every week. I'm gonna it's, have to find it. It's on Amazon. It's like season five or something, and it's also like they had two daughters, and they made one of them Mallory, who's really pretty, but they made her dumber and dumber yeah. every year. Yeah. Like, just she basically like was had a head injury or something. Yes. That, and then she had a boyfriend, Nick. Do you remember Nick? <laughs> yes. Yo, Mallory. Like, Yay! Hey. <laughs> hey. And then, Ooh. and then they had, and then they did that thing in sitcoms where they, they decide all of a sudden the mother's going to have a baby. Yeah. At like forty-six or something. Yeah. And then the baby ages five years <laughs> in between seasons. That's so right. That's it's a baby. A baby, and then like they come back for the new season, and he's like five. And he's like adorable, but he just walks into scenes and says a couple things, and then walks out. It's right. just. It became very, very formulaic. And one of the formulas in the 80s was these spe very special episodes. Yes. You know, people talk about child porn. They talk about AIDS. Mm -hmm. They talk about rape. They would talk or, about racism. Uh, yeah, drunk driving. That was a drunk big one. Drunk driving. That was a big one. Like, it, all of a sudden, like in a sitcom, it got really serious. Like, yeah. it, all very, of them did it. Very special episodes. I remember <laughs> yes. Growing Pains doing that all the time. Oh, my God. Yes. Very special. So that's what I've been talking well, out about. <laughs> that's a really good one. And I might try to find that one because I got to see this for myself. You're going to, you're going to freak out. I have been watching Fred Astaire movies. I Ooh. don't know how this started. Um, I just got it in my head one day. I want to watch Fred Astaire movies. So I watched Swing Time with him and Ginger Rogers. 
and it's really fun. I mean, he's just ama- he's amazing, and she's amazing, and it's just super fun to watch. Unfortunately, there's a huge segment that he's in blackface. Oh my God! So sakes. then, so then I like like curled up in a ball on the couch, like no, no, <laughs> like the whole the whole scene. But like, other than the blackface, it's a great movie. It's like <laughs> so. I won't be watching that one again. I didn't know that that was going to happen. And then I watched one. Patrick Bromley had mentioned it on one of his podcasts called You'll Never Get Rich with um, Fred Astaire and Rita Hayworth. And it's like her first like big movie. And it's really cute and really good. And she's such a movie star and she's so gorgeous. And I just love the dancing. It's it's really a good one. And then I also... I got to see it. Yeah, put it on your list. I think that mm-hmm. one is... I think that one was streaming too on Amazon Prime. And then I watched the Ellen DeGeneres special on Netflix. Did you watch that one yet? No. Is it good? I thought it was funny. I, okay. I like I like Ellen. I think she's funny. And there's like a running gag about because the show is called Relatable and it's about one of her you know, one of her friends said, like, well, you're not relatable anymore because you're super rich. So there's kind of this running gag throughout about her money that really works for me I think because I like Ellen's delivery she's very deadpan yes and um it's I just really enjoyed it and she also has a great segment about being vegan and how people are more offended by her being a vegan than being gay (laughs) (laughs) do you remember what a big deal it was when she came out it was a huge deal it was like oh my god also wasn't it like a for a lot of people like duh duh yeah yeah of course. Of course she is. We have eyes. We can see. Like, But some people, I guess, just didn't know. <laughs> but you had, they, had, they had to do this whole PR campaign around it. And it, it's just, it's so crazy to think about that now. Because nowadays people just shrug their shoulders like, yeah, maybe I am. I don't know. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't care. I, I did love the episode where she came out, though. It had Laura Dern. Yeah, I remember. And, and it was a really... I used to watch her show, not like every week, but every once in a while. And that episode was so fun. It was kind of a very special episode. And, it was a total special episode. But Billy it was Bob also Thornton really, was in it. it was also really funny. And Billy. Yeah, go ahead. Billy Bob Thornton was in it. And I was working on Swing Blade at the time. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was doing, um, when I first moved to New York, I was doing PR for this little, uh, it was a company that did PR for independent films. So uh, that Swing Blade was one of our movies. So I got to take him around New York at that oh. time. Yeah. And it was, he was married. And then like we, we all saw him on the show. And then all of a sudden we started getting calls like, there's a rumor he's with Laura Dern. And we'd be like, no, no, he's married. He's okay. And, you know, no, not that, that's not happening at all. It's totally what was happening. Oh. Yeah. Dude, I forgot that they were a thing. They were a thing. And then he left her for Angelina, Angelina Jolie. Jolie. Yeah. And Paula Dern got really upset. And I'm like, he was married. And I always think about this. Like, he was married when you met him. Like, yeah. Of course he's a skunk. It's so weird that Laura Dern would go out with Billy Bob Thornton. Women love him. That's so funny. What's that about? Women, I don't know. You he, saw him in person. Was I did. He's something very irresistible? Charming. Yeah, he's charming. He's very, he's very tiny. He's very thin. He, uh, he's got beautiful eyes. And he's a good listener. And that's kind of yeah. super hard that's, to resist. That's his superpower. Yes. Got it. Okay. Good to know. So, well, yeah, he's a he lucky man because he got to be with Laura Dern. <laughs> I love Laura Dern. I do too. I absolutely do too. She should be in everything. She should be in all the things. All the things. Well, this was super fun as always. I love talking about when Harry met Sally with you. This was so much fun. Thank you so much. And where can people find you on the internet? On the internet, um, find me on social media at Brooklyn Fit Chick. And my blog is called brooklynfitchick.com. And I, my other podcasts are Not Fade Away, the Fit Bottom Girls podcast, the Best Neighbors podcast, and Book Versus Movie. Okay. And you can find Dorking Out at dorkingoutshow.com and on Twitter at Dorking Out. Uh, actually, it's Dorking Out Show. That's right. And then you could find me at the Sonia Show. That's Sonia with an I and the Sonia Show.com. And my other podcast is Old Movies, New Beer, which is actually going to have a new episode soon. I promise it's going to happen. And 
I think that's, I think we've covered everything we need to cover. So happy new year, you guys. Happy new year. Yeah. And, uh, I'll just say goodbye. Do you want to say goodbye too? <laughs> okay. 